Addiction is a very serious deal. And I don't mean to minimize it in any way, shape, or form. Because addiction can ruin people's lives, it can ruin marriages, it can ruin relationships, it can ruin families. I've seen it up close and personal, and I know many of you have been affected by it directly, indirectly, one way or another. I mean, addiction is a mother. And again, I don't mean to minimize it in any way. But there are many types of addictions that you can have. I speak from my own standpoint. Perhaps the worst addiction that I have is I've been a smoker since I was 18 years of age. I've gone back and forth over the years between Swishers, Newports, to now Black and Miles. And I know it's bad for me. I know it could potentially kill me someday. And yet I still do it. And no, it's not easy to quit. And I've quit once or twice and went back or gotten close another couple of times and still ultimately fell back into the bad old habits. Now, it's not easy. But that doesn't mean that it still can't be done. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the only way you're ever going to get over an addiction is if you choose to get over an addiction. This is just my opinion in dealing with myself and my battle with trying to quit or really not quit smoking like I should have. And kids, if you haven't started, please don't ever start. It'll ruin so many things, I assure you of this. But I know this much, is that you have to want to do it. You have to have that desire, that commitment, that focus to drive to do it. And if you don't, it's never going to happen. You can have all the interventions in the world until they're blowing it down your throat and up your ass. If you don't want it, it's not going to happen, period. But at the same point in time, addiction is nobody else's fault but your own. And you ultimately choose it. I don't care what type of excuse, reason, rationale, logic is given. You make your own bed and you lay in. It's plain and simple. My mom used to be a really bad drinker for years. And eventually she got to the point where she stopped. And of all the things I could be proud of Bonnie Sue for over the years, above all else, it's when I told her that I didn't like the fact that she drank. And if she continued to drink any more the way that she did, mind you, at all of 11 years of age, that I would probably have to go live with my dad, which was something I really didn't want to do. That's how bad it was. She quit. And she quit almost instantly. And to this day, it's that thing that I respect about my mother more than anything else. That no matter how bad she had gotten, and no matter how ridiculous the problem had gotten, was the fact that it got to a point where I was important enough to her for her to affect a positive change in her life. And she did, to her credit. To her credit, she did. But she had to have the want to. She had to have the desire to. And ultimately, she did. And when she found that want to, that desire that need to stop doing something, she stopped it. Almost cold turkey. But she could sit there in years past and maybe have made excuses for why it was. At the end of the day, it was her fault. And she knows that. And I know when it comes to me and smoking, it doesn't matter all the ad campaigns in the world, it doesn't matter this, it doesn't matter friends that have done it, people that got me to do it over the years. At the end of the day, I made the decision and I made the choices. And nobody but me can affect a positive change. And it's nobody's fault but my own that I ever started doing it, have done it, and continue to do it, and until I ultimately get enough willpower to fucking stop, will continue to do it. When it comes to addiction, I think sometimes we focus too much on the addiction itself and the chemical concepts, the substance itself. We try to make up too many excuses and this and that. At the end of the day, it's up to that individual. It's their fault. They do it. And they choose to do it. And they don't choose to stop. And again, I'm speaking from my own experience. The reason I haven't stopped smoking is because I haven't chosen to stop smoking. It's that simple. And I think the real problem is, it's not an addiction to the substance or the habit or the action. It's an addiction to stupidity. You know you shouldn't do it. You know it's bad for you. You know the consequences it can cause. You know the effect it could have on yourself and others around you, and yet you still continue to do it. 
I think the single biggest addiction problem we have in this country, in this society, in the world as a whole, is our addiction to stupidity. And when I look at sports today, a perfect example of that addiction to stupidity is Johnny Manziel. I mean, you talk about a guy that could potentially have the world at his fingertips. You're talking potentially about a young man that could have everything he ever wanted and so much more. He could be one of the biggest stars in the country. He could be one of the biggest stars in the world. He could be a great NFL quarterback if he really truly wanted to. But he doesn't want to. And he doesn't get it. Because he can't get over his addiction to stupidity. What I hate is when I see somebody does stupid things, says stupid things, and all of a sudden now they use the rehab crux. So I got to go to rehab and I got to get it right as a way to kind of deflect blame and not shoulder the burden on themselves like they should, not take the accountability for themselves and their actions like they should. It's using that chicken shit rehab defense, that chicken shit rehab maneuver of I'll go hide for a few months like a fucking coward and not own up to anything. And then when I come back, everything's supposed to be hunky-dory and we'll sing kumbaya fucking ya. It doesn't deal with the fact that humans, by and large, are stupid. We are fundamentally stupid creatures. I know I am, a lot of you are, and I most certainly know Johnny Manziel is. How fucking stupid can you be? A former Heisman Trophy winner, first round pick in the NFL, a quarterback who had a reputation in college for partying hard and not always having his priorities in the right place. You've worked your entire life to get to a point where you have the ability to fulfill a lifelong dream. You got drafted into the NFL, and on top of that, you got drafted as a quarterback and a quarterback in the first round. The potential to make millions of dollars right away and so many millions of dollars more going forward. The ability to be in all types of TV commercials and in movies and television shows. The world is at your fingertips, potentially. And this guy can't stop being a jackass. Rolling up $20 bills in fucking bathrooms. Gee, I wonder why. You know, being filmed at parties drinking when you had just already went to rehab, supposedly. Just all what other imaginary problems you freaking had that didn't really deal with the fundamental issue is that Johnny Manziel is fucking stupid. And that he's addicted to fucking stupid. And the most notable example of this is just recently... The jackass took a picture of himself with four loco and posted it on a social media site when you had just gotten basically an indirect suspension from the Cleveland Browns, lost your starting gig because you had just went out partying and lied about it to the organization. So after that, you decided it's a good idea to take a, dr take a drink, post pictures of it on social media for everybody to fucking see. Johnny Manziel is an addict. But he's an addict for stupidity and stupid behavior. Look, he's still a 22, 23-year-old kid. I feel funny at 34 calling somebody in their early 20s a kid, but compared to me, he is a fucking kid. Now, I think back to when I was 21, 22, 23. I think back to some of the stupid parties and some of the stupid shit I did over the years. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> when the cops would come knocking, you could tell who had the outstanding warrants as people were jumping off the second and third story balconies. I'll leave it there. You got 100 people crowded in a garage. Everybody's smoking that weed. And all of a sudden, we're all trying to be quiet. It's cops are knocking on the garage. Well, we're still fucking lighting up. I mean, I did a lot of stupid shit in my early days, too. But I also didn't have the same stakes on the line as Manziel did. And I most certainly, if I spend my entire life working towards one thing and trying to achieve one goal, that if I got that close to ultimately achieving that goal, I would find a way to cut out the stupid shit and put all of my efforts and energies into trying to realizing and fulfilling and achieving my ultimate goal and dream in life. And people can say a lot of things about Jameis Winston, but the one thing to his credit that I will say about Jameis Winston, at least throughout his rookie season with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, his rookie season in the NFL as a quarterback, is as soon as he got drafted, he cut out all the bullshit. It's basically like, if I'm not doing a charity event, I'm not going out. 
I'm going to do everything I can to put all of my efforts into my craft and become a better player as a result. And you can see the growth in Jameis Winston's game throughout the course of his rookie year. He was another example of somebody being addicted to nothing else other than being stupid. And Jameis Winston decided to stop being stupid, to slow down, think for a moment, and try to figure out whether this was something good to do or something bad to do. He started doing more of the good things to do, and he cut out the things that were bad and dumb to do. He made mistakes, and he learned from them. Johnny Manziel continues to make mistakes and not learn from them. This has nothing to do with something that he rolls up in a joint. This has nothing to do with something he would either shoot up his arm or blow up his nose. This has nothing to do with something in a bottle that he consumes. This has everything to do with this guy being a young, immature, punk entitled shit who's addicted to fucking stupid that think the world owes him everything and he doesn't have to do a damn thing that he doesn't want to do. And if he wants to do it, by God, he's going to fucking do it. Damn the consequences to himself or anybody fucking else. It's that simple. I'm tired of people talking about this guy needs rehab. You can't rehab stupid. Johnny Manziel is addicted to stupid. And I hope the Cleveland Browns do the right thing for themselves and ultimately for Manziel because it's the only way he's going to learn to cut his fucking ass. Now, of course, maybe a team like the Dallas Cowboys come right in and say, hey, we don't care if you drink or fucking party. Do all the stupid shit you want. We like having Johnny football around. But maybe getting cut by the Cleveland Browns of all fucking teams. The Cleveland Browns don't want you. What the hell does that mean? Maybe that would be the thing that finally snaps this guy out of this and makes him wake the fuck up. Because he has an opportunity in front of him and he's pissing it down its leg. And one thing that frustrates me is when I see people like this in life, and in sports in particular, they have these golden opportunities that could do some really, really good things, and they can't get out of their own way, and they ultimately piss those opportunities down their leg. That's what's exactly what Johnny Manziel's doing. Please don't say it's because he's addicted to any drugs. Please don't say it's because he's addicted to alcohol. He's not addicted to anything other than fucking being a jackass. He's fucking stupid. That's his addiction. And until he gets the proper help he needs to fix his addiction to stupidity, until he comes to the realization that his own stupidity is his biggest enemy, he's never going to get anything accomplished, and we're ultimately going to look back on him five, ten years from now and wonder where the hell Johnny Manziel is because he's going to drop off of the face of the fucking earth. And he will have had nobody to blame ultimately but himself.